Hi, my name is Reina and this is Ciao and Tell. I'm so excited for today's episode. It's the eve of Independence Day, July 4th in the United States here. Um, and I have a friend here as my guest who's come all the way from India, from Goa, where I used to live. So it's a real treat to have her in the studio. Um, but before that, I just wanted to preface our topic for today, which is the sensuality of food. It's the pleasure of eating. Um, and it's one of the reasons, it's actually probably the single most reason why I do what I do. I love to eat, I love food. Um, not just eating it, but thinking about it, talking about it, looking at it, smelling it, sharing it, touching it, feeling it, like everything about food is what I love. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, so please, without further ado, welcome to the studio and to Chow and Tell, my very dear friend, all the way from Goa, Arushi. Arushi, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is so awesome that we get to do this together. Yes. Yes, and, it is. I've um, been watching the show. I know, um, from Goa. Online, yeah. <laughs> and it's really cool to be on it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a great thing. I'm really happy that I get to do this and then we get to record our time together. Yeah. Um, and tell me about, so you've been traveling like for a while now. Yes, I have been traveling for a while for work. Yeah. And part of what I do is I work on introducing the concept of pleasure to people who educate uh, young people on sex. Oh, wow. You know, so sex educators, public health professionals, I try and get them to open up a little more about pleasure and safer sex. Okay. Because often we talk about risk and fear. And one of the ways we do this is to start talking about food. Wow. So food and sex and pleasure and sensuality yeah. somehow all built into yeah. to each other. So yeah. tell us, how, how do you do that? How do you connect the two? Um, it's really difficult, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the exercises we do is, you know, we ask participants to think about the most amazing meal they ever had, you know, the what they remember about it, the, the flavors <sighs> and the smells, you know, the textures, who they were with yeah. or not, uh, what was the context, mm -hmm. you know, the, what was the mood like and the lighting and, you know, they really need to think about what made this experience, this sort of culinary experience so amazing and fantastic to stick in their oh, heads. I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> listening to you. <laughs> it's already so exciting. Yeah. I mean, that's... that's yeah. Um, so, and, and then people do, they go through this exercise. Right. So then they take two minutes to just think about this one meal that was just, mm, you know, <laughs> like it's just stuck in their head because yeah. of whatever. And then they talk to each other about it. So in, you know, in small pairs, you have to sort of describe and recreate that experience oh, wow. for the other person. You have to just describe in great detail, you know, the juices, the taste, the flavors, the the smells and all of it, all those senses that come into play mm -hmm. when you're eating something and yeah. it's creating a massively pleasurable experience for you. So I think there's something also really interesting in the recreation of it uh -huh. because there's something, um, I don't know if it's like sense memory and you're yeah. in fact asking them to tap into their sense memory because very often, I know this happens to me and it probably happens to a lot of people, a meal doesn't end when the meal ends. Right. That the memory of that meal right. or that food item or something that you loved as a child yeah. to eat or drink yeah. stays with you sometimes yeah. for life. And yeah. you can, I know I can summon up that sense right. without even being in that setting or anything mm. at all. And it mm. sounds like this exercise is kind yeah. of invoking that, but yeah. it's making them pay attention. Absolutely. To, to all the, the aspects. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's also getting them to articulate those oh. sensory you know feelings those experiences use these words that describe what what is pleasurable for them what is sort of almost sensual yeah, yeah. for them you know yeah. and that then gives us the language yeah, wow. which when related to sex is so difficult and taboo and shameful and there's a lot of silence around it especially yeah. in south asia yeah um, and you know, you say, well, you know, you can talk about it for food. Yeah. You know, it's the same words yeah. in the same language. And you, know, you we don't really stop to think about that, but when you go to a market, for example, and you're examining the skin of a fruit mm. or the flesh yeah. of, um, a, you know, a ripe tomato, yeah. you know, this, you look at the seeds and mm -hmm. the juices yeah. and you pick it up and smell it. You feel the, te yeah. you know, this. Yeah. <laughs> 
So it's, so actually, it's 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 ripe with innuendo, mm, mm, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Talking about food yeah. and and not in kind of a a sleazy, dirty way, but no. there's something absolutely magical and beautiful about yeah, it. And it's almost erotic. I mean, yeah. it can be a hugely erotic experience, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's like I like to talk about my favorite dish. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> and it. it's in this little cafe, a French cafe in Nepal, in Kathmandu. Wow. And uh, it's a dessert, so because I have such a sweet tooth, <laughs> it had to be a dessert. We've had many desserts together, <laughs> Rishi and I. <laughs> so, so in this cafe, in this French cafe in Nepal, in Kathmandu, yeah. they serve what uh, they a coulon au chocolat. And it's just... What's it's, a coulon? It's a cou- I don't know what a coulon is. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds... Mm, it rolls yeah. off the tongue already. It does, yeah. right? It's got this coulon beautiful name, yeah. coulon au chocolat. And it's this little... It's this. It's about that big, yeah. right? It's it's this chocolate um, delight. Oh, look at you. You're it's, rolling your eyes. So the, yeah, it's, really? you know, it's velvety oh. and soft and it's warm, so they make it uh, just, you know, before they bring right. it, it takes them some time. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's accompanied by a little small cup of um, vanilla cream, Ooh. you know, and it's got, you can see the black specks of the vanilla pod in it. Oh, wow. And the smell of the chocolate and the vanilla coming together. Oh, wow. And a little sprig of mint just oh, over wow. it. And the, and the cafe itself is a beautiful setting. It's yeah. an old uh, palace. Oh. Well, actually, the stables of a palace. Really? And it's been, yeah, it's been sort of re, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, renovated and redone in the cafe. And it's in the, there's a patio and uh, it's a beautiful setting. And I usually go there with, with a friend. And this coulon au chocolat with the vanilla cream, you know, it's just, it's just the right amount because yeah. it's very rich yeah, chocolate yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't want any more than, than that. that. Yeah. And you just <sighs> take a bite out of that soft, <sighs> moist chocolate and then you sort of dip into the vanilla cream. Mm, oh, it sounds absolutely gorgeous. See, I already, I, I feel like I had it. Mm, I feel yeah. like yeah. I just experienced what you experienced yeah. there in Kathmandu in the stable converted yeah. into the yeah. thing. Like, I've never been there. Right. But I was just yeah. there. Like, you yeah. took me there right. just by that description. Yeah. Um, and it, it's hugely important that you ha- had paid attention mm. then yeah. to all these things. And you've gone back perhaps a few times yeah. And, yeah. and maybe different things catch your eye or yeah. you, you know you like the visual aspect mm. i can i can almost see it yeah yeah and taste it and smell it right. um that's so powerful yeah. i just yeah. think that's such a powerful aspect of food mm. is one is the experience yourself and the other is sharing it yeah. with somebody else the meal yeah. but also the experience later when you go and mm. talk to someone about yeah. it yeah there's something very magical yeah. in that exchange yeah. too absolutely yeah. oh wow yeah. you know when you were talking you reminded me of um i've had many many of these food experiences yeah but uh, the one you, I, I was reminded of is when I was in, uh, in, uh, I was in Melbourne visiting a friend mm-hmm. in Australia and I was on my way to the airport and we had like an hour to kill and we both said it would be perfect if we found just a nice little place for a tea, like a high tea would be great right uh-huh. now. We were in a neighborhood we weren't familiar with yeah. and literally we said that and two seconds later we passed this red and gold opulent shop window that mm-hmm. was a tea house. Ooh. And we did a double take. It was magic. You, you know, you, yeah. you wish it and it's and there. there. We just manifested this this amazing luxury tea house. Right. It was run by an Eastern European woman who used to be a chemist oh. in her former life. And she'd moved mm. and started using her chemistry to create these really incredible truffles. And they wow. did a truffle tea. So you had a huge menu of right. different kinds of chocolate truffles yeah. paired with very fine teas that were served in China. You were sitting in these throne-like mm. upholstered chairs, huge, you know, uh, gilded mirrors yeah. on the walls yeah. and a chandelier. Like it right. was really the whole yeah. decadence of the entire <laughs> setting already. You're, you know, kind of yeah. into that mood. And um, and you get three little truffles, whichever you pick. They had yeah. a little set menu with your tea. And... One of them I remember was this dark chocolate truffle mm-hmm. and it had coarse sea salt sprinkled on top and two small little leaves of rosemary crossed on top. They were fresh rosemary and a small drizzle. This is all very minuscule. Yeah, it's tiny. Yeah. A little drop of extra virgin olive oil, very high quality. Mm. 
mm. on a chocolate. So you've got salt, rosemary, and yeah. oil which, on a truffle, which yeah. is bizarre. Right. You don't associate those things with chocolate. Not, not. normally, although <laughs> things are changing nowadays. You sure. see a lot more. But you know, back then when I when this happened, it was a really new thing. Mm. And I, I mean, I'm salivating thinking about it now. <laughs> and I bit into this chocolate. Yeah. And I wept. <gasps> I actually, what? like right there, I just started crying. And wow. it wasn't made up, like I, I, it took me by surprise right. too. And my friend was there and she's like, are you okay? I said, oh, I'm so okay. <laughs> I, I don't even think I could speak quite honestly. I don't, right. And I just had this little tear. It was so mm. amazing. Because mm. as that olive oil hit the yeah. tongue, the fragrance of the rosemary goes. And, yeah. and then the, the crystals of salt start dissolving. Oh, and right through that cuts this creamy, rich, dark... <laughs> I, I, I can taste this. And it was this, inti- it was a very intimate moment. Right, right. And it honestly it was just me yeah. and that little truffle. Oh my God. In that moment, there was nothing else. It was yeah. very, I felt very present. Sure. Like yeah. there was no future, no past, no yeah. plane to catch, mm. no nowhere I was coming from. It was just this single moment in time yeah. with me and the rosemary, olive yeah. oil, yeah. sea salt, chocolate. And it was incredible. Yeah. And I haven't thought about that in a long time. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. You know, this is the sensuality of food. I mean, oh, you wow. can... Yeah. And that's a big part of your work. Yes. I mean, and yes. Uh, tell me the name of this... Um, the, the Oh, so the so I volunteer for what's called the Pleasure Project. Oh, wow. It's, so this uh, is part of that. I mean, yes, it's yeah. part of that. You know, we try and uh, tell sex educators and public health professionals that if they want to sell safer sex, you know, whether it's using condoms or non, non penetrative sex, they need to use pleasure because most people are, you know, having sex in the pursuit of pleasure. Mm. And if we don't use that language, then we're losing the ear of young people, of other people who are engaging in sexual activity. Um, and you know, not encouraging them to to enjoy, to enjoy safer it. sex. And I would take from that. I mean, because I work with food, and and that's my realm. Yeah. And the two are not far apart. I yeah. mean, on so many levels. And I just think it's wonderful that you have that impetus to to really put the pleasure spin on it. Yeah. Rather than it being this daunting thing, I meet a lot of people who have the same reaction to food and cooking. Right. That it's yeah. scary, yeah. it's daunting, it's a pain in the butt, yeah. it's so time consuming, it's just really mm. uh, it's this drudgery. Yeah. yeah. And just like people make love, mm. people eat yeah. every day. I mean, if yeah. we don't eat, we die eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Um so it's a necessity and yet for many it's a struggle mm. and uh, a lot of the work I do is bringing the pleasure back right. to not just eating, but to cooking, to yeah. shopping, to yeah. enjoying, to to sort of engaging, re-engaging yeah. with yeah. the food that right. you're cooking before, during, after, yeah. uh, engaging with the people that you share it with. Mm. Um, yeah. So there's so many levels yeah. that yeah. I think we actually might be doing Absolutely. very similar work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. so interesting, yeah, you know. Right. Um, right. We've had... And we've shared so many meals together. I yes. know Arushi is a tiramisu fiend uh, and a snob, just like bo- we're <laughs> both. We, we, we perce- we've had some really bad tiramisu. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. And things that pass for tiramisu. Yeah. And we're just, yeah. I have no shame in saying yeah. we're totally <laughs> snobby about it. Yeah. I remember, what was that one? There was one that was really terrible. It was like a, a coconut was a, mashed pudding yeah, yeah. at the bottom. It was like, oh, it was... It was Trying to be a vegan tiramisu, but failing miserably. It was failing miserably. Yeah. And, but I do know through that, because it was so bad, I right. went out and found a way to do it better. Uh-huh. Um, and maybe after this episode or something, I can actually post. Yeah. I should post that recipe. It was oh, really. You should. It yeah. was. I know you tasted it. Yes. And it was pretty close. It like was I still pretty, could. Yeah. yeah I, I need some tweaks. It was vegan tiramisu. It was vegan and tiramisu. really close to it was real close. tiramisu. And I mean, the real thing is great. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you can get the real thing, eat the real thing. Right. But for whatever reason, if, yeah. you know, if dietary vegan, choices yeah. or allergies or whatever, if you can't, mm-hmm. um, you know, this was the next closest thing. I know mm-hmm. we had, um, what was that in that little lane in. Uh, in Chapora. Oh, that's right. Yes. What's her in name? Shop? Fiorella. 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 She yeah. and I go to Arushi for all. She's like, go try. The, don't eat the brownies here, but go for the tiramisu yeah. there. And she's been a lot, like a big part of my food experience in Goa. Um, we'll discover new things together, which is really fun. Yeah. It's so yeah. fun to do that that's and try right. things. Yeah. And someone who's open to. 
to try new things mm. as well. I mean, the other day we were here at Toscanini's and you had oh, yeah. this, uh, the Mexican the chocolate mm, ice cream. Yeah, that was really nice. Wasn't that so good? Oh my God, this chocolate ice cream with bits of almond and the cinnamon mm. and a little bit of chili. You just know, at the just, end, oh, right? Oh, it's just, it hits you right at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just out of the world. It it's was so, so good. good. It was so really, really good. good. Yeah. And it's really nice to be able to have that experience and bring that experience every time. I mean, it doesn't have to be at that really super yeah, heightened yeah. Uh, sense, you know, yeah. every single meal. Sometimes you want something on the go. It's like yeah. you want a quickie, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. uh, a quick meal. You're just, you want a snack, yeah. you know. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to eat and yeah. that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's about, I think it's more about listening to the body, being yeah. more in touch with what's going on, how you're feeling right then, you know, are you eating out of anxiety, mm. do you really need to eat more, is this really tasty for you, yeah. you know, yeah. or are you just doing it because somebody before you serve themselves something yeah. out the buffet I just line. Being polite. Be- yeah. yeah. yeah but having that awareness, I yeah, think, makes absolutely. a huge difference. Knowing what gives you pleasure, knowing, you know, um, what you're definitely not going to like, but also being able, open to trying different things out and, you know, as yeah. long as you think, you know, you're in a safe space. Yeah. And, Maybe yeah, you know. it's a lot. Um, so it's an attitude. It's almost, it's an attitude. Yeah. It's a state of mind yeah. of yeah. being open-minded, yeah. knowing your boundaries <clears throat> and limits and maybe sometimes being uh, adventurous and mm. pushing those, yeah. Yeah. you know, finding other people to share that with, yeah. Yeah, exactly. for example. I mean, I'm reminded of that, um, that wonderful movie, uh, Amelie. Oh, yeah. Which is just a food movie. There's so many good food <laughs> movies. I mean, many yeah. movies are food movies. Yeah. And yeah. that was one of the uh, sure. the ones, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. groundbreaking ones, where she's tapping the, uh, the creme brulee, mm. the top of the creme brulee, mm. with yeah. that spoon. And just right. the sound, even the sound yes. that that metal spoon makes yeah. on the top of this caramelized sugar yeah. until it shatters right. and then it sinks mm. into that cream yeah and it's just beautiful yeah and then it cuts right to a, a shot where she's just plunging her hand into these burlap bags full of wheat or grain mm. or rice mm. Mm. and right. she's just deli and i remember doing this as a child i would oh, go really? to the markets with my grandfather yeah. or my mom yeah and uh in india things are sold uh, wholesale mm. grain and rice mm. and yeah and then these big jute bags. Right. And they would come kind of up to here for yeah. me as a little kid. <laughs> and so I reach into it and just, I loved putting my hand yeah. into that yeah. bag and yeah. just feeling, feeling the texture of right. those grains rolling over my mm. hand. Yeah. And the hands are so sensitive. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. so much, yeah. so many nerve endings Absolutely. in the hand. Yeah. Um, it's funny you talk about the sound of the, you know, yeah. creme brulee breaking because one of the things also we do is like the sound of the crackle of the condom wrapper oh. you know me it's part of foreplay and you know you're getting ready for it <laughs> you know it's almost so like it's similar this, yeah, it's, it's, it's like just, yeah. the anticipation yes. of pleasure yeah yeah, yeah. you it's know like the creme brulee pleasure. was that it's like she yeah. knew what yeah. it was going to taste like right. or had yeah. some sense of what it yeah. might taste like but yeah. just even that moment right you know yeah and then there are so many you know even what you said about an intimate moment mm-hmm. And for me, I think one of the most intimate food moments is with mangoes in mango season <gasps> in India, oh, because I know it's about that. yeah, it's when you because it's so gooey and sticky and messy and you know the best way to eat a mango is with your hands, yeah. not yeah. not with a spoon or with the fork and knife or anything involved. Yeah, yeah. It's just you and the mango, <laughs> direct you know contact. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's just. My favorite thing is to get into an air-conditioned room and <laughs> take off all my clothes <laughs> and have this mango because oh, it's wow. going to be drippy and juicy all over and just enjoy the mango wow. in all its juiciness and sweetness and flavor. Wow. And, and, and that so is different. a memorable image yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Don't get pictures in your head. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand, like I understand mm. that, that wish to go back to our senses in the sense of like touching with your hands yeah, not yeah. not mediated by yeah. a fork or a napkin yeah. or anything yeah. Yeah. um and just really it's a, it's a much rawer experience yeah. Yeah. i think yeah. and too often now we have very sanitized experiences yeah. where everything is already pre-cut for us mm. uh you know it's it's clean it's wrapped in shrink yeah. wrap it's put in a box you don't know what it used to look mm. like mm. And you don't have the experience of, of taking out the seed, eating right. around that, yeah. that central seed, yeah. um, having that thing yeah. be juicy and sticky and, and discover that it's not a big deal. Like, yeah. 
yeah. the world doesn't end because you get right. a little bit of juice yeah you know yeah. even rubbing down your chin, down your chin on your shirt or yeah wherever yeah. you know it's just it's food it's it's okay. food it's all right yeah. it's safe it's okay yeah. and and in fact i mean now especially that it's summer yeah um it's so hot i mean we had a mm. we had a mad hot day today we were just yeah. running around in the heat and and it, it made me think you know like this there's, there's just so much amazing produce now and fruits are yeah. at the, the just the peak of ripeness for so many mm. things the freshness and ripeness of all the things you find in the farmers markets or you know seasonal yeah. seasonal stuff that's yeah. um on the stands yeah. now yeah. and and I thought, well, should we bake something or make something or cook something? And just from the heat, mm. not wanting to be yeah. near another heat source. Yeah. And I said, why? We're talking about returning to the basics. Mm. And so we brought peaches, mm. fresh summer fruit. And, the, yeah. you know, it's one of the best things you can do. Like, don't cook it. Just yeah. eat it, enjoy it in its rawest form as it is. Yeah. And I know I have a special love of peaches, and I think yeah. we share that too. Yeah. What, do you have a peach story? Oh my God, my peach story is from when I, I went to Canada for the first time in 2006. Uh-huh. And in India we have peaches, but they're yeah. much smaller, and I think there's only a few varieties. Yeah. Yeah. And in Canada there were these huge peaches, which were just rose-colored and oh. sort of actually peach-colored. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's where the color peach comes from. You yeah. know, they're just... Yeah. And they're sort of velvety and, oh. you know, you, oh, I was biting into them and uh, it just the juice was kind of <laughs> dripping everywhere and it was just... And it has that fragrance, smell. that, that oh. beautiful floral yeah, fragrance. Yeah, and, you know, that's where the, 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 the peach perfume comes, yeah. comes from. Yeah, it's just yeah. that peach flavor. Oh, it's oh so my amazing. Gosh. That was, and th- those are the peaches I remember. You know, you, we, I've eaten peaches ever since but it's those canadian peaches, peaches those peaches. rose peach colored yeah soft texture and you'll peaches. never I'm, i bet you'll never forget that experience no. ever i have a, a peach experience from mm. when i was in the 11th grade uh-huh. and it was lunch break and it was just me and this peach like everyone else was out and yeah. i remember opening my lunch box and i had this peach and i was transfixed because <laughs> it had just the perfect shape mm absolutely undented mm. and the aroma it was at exactly the point of being like it needed to be eaten right yeah. then mm. and the blush it was just i mean this this blushing yeah shy peach it was bursting at the seams and i spent my entire lunch break people think i'm a freak <laughs> but you're here and you yes. don't yeah, no. <laughs> and it's and it just I really savored that peach. It mm. was just the one peach. I didn't have more. It wasn't about eating more right. of them, yeah. just savoring that one. And I spent a lot of quality time, me and the peach. <laughs> Raina and, and the peach. Raina and the peach. It was a perfect peach. It really was. And I've had many good ones since, but that one really yeah. stuck in my yeah. mind. Yeah. Um, as, you know, the flesh has a certain way of just, it has a little bit of um, uh, resistance at mm-hmm. the beginning mm-hmm. and then you bite and then, then just at one point it, tears and bursts mm. and gives way yeah. and then you're in yeah. uh, and then the flesh starts just falling off the oh, pit yeah. in big chunks and it same thing mm. the juice and the you know and it's always been my favorite fruit and I think that experience sort yeah. of anchored it right. in being my favorite mm. fruit speaking of which it's chow and we have to eat on the show of course and we yes. brought peaches we got yeah. summer peaches and this is our dish for today it's not a dish it's a fruit and I'm really encouraging people to go out there, touch your fruits, smell mm. them, find the ripe ones. Here you go. We have Thank little you. bowls. Just so we don't dribble on the equipment. It's not, <laughs> it's not, I'm not worried about my clothes or anything, but yeah. the equipment Ooh. is a different story. Mm. Mm. Can we smell this? Yeah. I can smell them from oh, there already. Yeah. Aren't they good? It's just the peach just smell. Peach. Just a yeah. lovely peach. And there's a bit of juice. There's a bit of Already out. <laughs> mm. Oh. Mm. that is really good that is beautiful mm. oh wow mm. Mm. And then this is a good silence yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a the reddish skin on the outside and then yeah. the yellow inside yeah these are the and yellow uh, peaches and oh they're very mm. good mm. I have to say 
Mm. And when it's warm out, I mean, this is the best thing to do. Yeah. We're going to continue eating our peaches. Check out this show <laughs> and my website, www.kitchen-intuition.com. We're going to keep having a good time and buy good fruit. Have a great summer. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Arushi, for Thank being you. on the show. Bye, Bye-bye. everyone. <laughs> That's our show.